While some dogs will dip a toe in the water and maybe join you in the pool, other breeds are born for the water. These breeds were developed to work in the water, whether for hunting, retrieving, rescue, or as all-around helpers. Even though they're perfectly happy on land, they're truly delighted to hit the beach, or lake, or anything wet. If you're looking for a canine companion that revels in boating and swimming, one of these is perfect for you. 1. American Water Spaniel. This charming little Wisconsin-bred water dog is just a right size to hunt from a canoe or a skiff. Combining traits of a retriever and a spaniel, he's used to working in water, everything from the marshes of the Great Lakes to icy expanses. The breed is pretty rare, but those in and the know love his eagerness and energy. The limited popularity of the American Water Spaniel restricted development, resulting in the breed being relatively unchanged since its origins in the 19th century. They are a medium-sized dog, with a curly liver, brown, or chocolate-colored coat. The average height at the withers for the breed is 15 to 18 inches or 38 to 46 centimeters, and their weight around 25 to 45 pounds or 11 to 20 kilograms. They have similar features to the Irish Water Spaniel, but the Irish breed is larger at between 21 to 24 inches or 53 to 61 centimeters, and weighing 55 to 65 pounds or 25 to 29 kilograms. The coat of the American Water Spaniel can fall in two different patterns, either tightly curled or in the Marcel pattern, where the fur falls in waves. Working and show lines have not diverged as with some other breeds of Spaniel, and both appear the same, with show dogs of this breed being rare. The coat has a coarse outside layer which keeps water away and protects the dog from foliage such as briars. The inside layer provides insulation to keep the dog warm. The coat has an oily feel to it, which gives off a doggy smell. The breed standard specifies color of the eyes should harmonize with the color of the coat and should never be yellow. The skull is broad and it carries long, white ears. The tail is not typically docked. Barbet. Although rare in the US, the Barbet has been a popular French water dog since at least the 16th century when Henry IV hunted waterfowl with his Barbet. Friendly, outgoing, and energetic, the Barbet is drawn to water, even muddy swampy tracks. In fact, his nickname is Mud Dog. The Barbet is a rare breed. Most Barbets, especially those shown in confirmation shows, are entirely black, black and white, or brown. It is common to see white chest spots and white paws or legs on black or brown coated dogs. Fun, that can range from pearl, cream, to gold the shade, and pied variations are re-emerging, but in limited numbers. Male Barbets usually grow to be about 21 to 25 inches or 53 to 64 centimeters tall, and between 40 and 60 pounds or 18 and 27 kilograms, while females usually reach about 20 to 23 inches or 51 to 58 centimeters, and 30 to 50 pounds or 14 to 23 kilograms. The breed stands 58 to 65 centimeters or 23 26 inches for the males, 53 to 61 centimeters or 21 to 24 inches for females, with a tolerance of 1 centimeter or 0.39 inches plus or minus, and weighs 17 to 28 kilogram or 37 to 62 pounds. The Barbet is a prototypic water dog, with a long, woolly, and curly coat. Their coats grow long and must be groomed regularly, otherwise the coat can become matted, and the barbet may lose small tufts of hair like tumbleweeds. The accepted colors of the breed are solid black, brown, fawn, gray, pale fawn, white, or more or less pied. All shades of red fawn and pale fawn are permitted. The shade should, preferably, be the same as the color of the body. Gray and white are extremely rare, mixed colors, except with white, are considered a fault. The most common colors are black or brown with white markings. The birth figures worldwide for 2007 are 176. All born were black or brown, some with white markings on the chest, chin, and legs. 3. Boykin Spaniel. Those who hunt wild turkey and waterfowl in the swampy and marshy terrain of the American South treasure this medium-sized Spaniel. He's a great companion for an active family, lovable, trainable, and eager and he'll outlast you in the water every time. The Boykin Spaniel is a friendly, social dog that is considered a good family pet. It is easily trained and eager to work. It is good with and extremely stable around children and other dogs. They can sometimes be described as energetic with great endurance. They are extremely adaptable to different environments as long as they are given ample opportunity for social interaction and plenty of time to burn off excess energy reserves. They are not easily angered and tend to be eager to please and friendly, but they love attention. The Boykin Spaniel is only slightly larger than the English Cocker Spaniel, but much heavier through the body width. 
Height at the withers for males range from 15.5 to 17 inches or 39 to 43 centimeters, and weight 30 to 40 pounds or 14 to 18 kilograms. Females are smaller, 14 to 16.5 inches or 36 to 42 centimeters, and 25 to 35 pounds or 11 to 16 kilograms. Buyers should be aware of the size and weight in the puppy's pedigree before choosing a breeder if size is a factor in their choice of dog. Traditionally, its tail is docked at the age of three days, leaving one-third of the length. Eyes are engaging and bright. The color ranges from brilliant gold to a dark amber. Puppies will have milky bluish gold to amber eyes until a few months old. The coat color comes in liver or chocolate, shades of brown. Coat length and density vary widely due to the variety of breeds that make up the recent background of this breed. The coat is flat to moderately curly with medium length, fine hair with light feathering acceptable on the legs, feet, ears, chest, and belly. Length is normally 1 to 2 inches throughout the body. A few bloodlines throw shorter, straight coats much like a Labrador Retriever. Feathering on the ears, chest, through the tuck up and along the legs can be very little to moderate in density and length. Feathering may take on a sun-bleached golden to tawny color especially on the ears and should not be penalized. Groomed dogs should have a minimal of stripping or clipping, with slight shaping around the head and top line. Some individuals have a top knot like a Llewellyn setter. Field types are often shaved down and should not be penalized if it is of appropriate length to protect the skin. Improper shaving will result in some coats growing back in with excessive discoloration, fading or graying. White markings other than a mark on the chest, or a white mark on the chest that is more than 60% of the width of the chest, disqualify puppies from being registered with the Boykin Spaniel Society, although the American Kennel Club and United Kennel Club do not allow denial of registration for confirmation reasons. White on the toes or chest is purely a cosmetic trait and will not affect the ability or health of the dog. 4. Chesapeake Bear Retriever. His name says it all. With his oily waterproof coat, strength and endurance, this rugged gun dog was born to work the rough, often icy waters of the Chesapeake Bay. This versatile, energetic breed thrives with active, outdoorsy families. The Chesapeake Bear Retriever is a large-sized breed of dog belonging to the Retriever, Gun Dog, and Sporting Breed groups. Members of the breed may also be referred to as a Chessie, CBR, or Chesapeake. The breed was developed in the United States Chesapeake Bay area during the 19th century. Historically used by area market hunters to retrieve waterfowl, pull fishing nets, and rescue fishermen, it is primarily a family pet and hunting companion. They are often known for their love of water and their ability to hunt. It is a medium to large-sized dog similar in appearance to the Labrador Retriever. The Chesapeake has a wavy coat, rather than the Labrador's smooth coat. They are described as having a bright and happy disposition, courage, willingness to work, alertness, intelligence, and love of water as some of their characteristics. Distinctive features include eyes that are very clear, of yellowish or amber hue, hindquarters as high or a trifle higher than the shoulders, and a double coat that tends to wave on shoulders, neck, back, and loins. The waterproof coat feels slightly oily and is often associated with a slight musky odor. Three basic colors are generally seen in the breed. Brown, which includes all shades from a light to a deep dark brown, sedge, which varies from a reddish yellow through a bright red to chestnut shades, and dead grass in all its shades, varying from a faded tan to a dull straw color. The breed standard states that white may also appear, but it must be limited to the breast, belly, toes, or back of the feet. The head is round and broad with a medium stop and muzzle. The lips are thin, and the ears are small and of medium leather. The forelegs should be straight with good bone. The hindquarters are especially strong, and the toes webbed since excellent swimming ability is important for the Chesapeake. This breed is also known for its large and powerful chest, used to break apart ice when diving into cold water while duck hunting. 5. Curly-coated Retriever. This English dog is one of the oldest retrieving breeds. Hard-working, versatile, and extremely smart, the curly will retrieve in the iciest water, and he is still a favorite of hunters. Some call him the thinking man's retriever. The curly-coated retriever is a breed of dog originally bred in England for upland bird and waterfowl hunting. It is the tallest of the retrievers and is easily distinguishable by the mass of tight curls covering its body. Curly-coated and wavy-coated, now known as the flat-coated retriever, were the first two recognized retriever breeds, established as early as 1860. The curly is an active, well-muscled dog bred for upland bird and waterfowl hunting. The curly is somewhat different in structure than the more common retrievers. A curly will appear slightly leggy, but is actually slightly longer than tall. 
It is balanced and agile with a significant air of endurance, strength, and grace. Curlies are soft mouthed and regularly handle game with care. Show standards call for dogs to be between 25 and 27 inches or 64 and 69 centimeters at the withers, and for females to be between 23 and 25 inches or 58 and 64 centimeters, however a wide range of sizes occurs, particularly in those dogs bred for the field, which generally run smaller. The country of origin calls for a taller dog, with only 27 inches or 69 centimeters for males, and 25 inches 64 centimeters for females listed. In the show ring, taller is preferable to shorter. Weight should be in proportion to the height of the dog. The breed sports a coat of tight, crisp curls. The tight curled coat of the curly repels water, burrs, and prevents damage that other sporting dogs with softer, thinner coats cannot escape. The only acceptable colors for the curly coated retriever are solid black and solid liver. Occasional white hairs are permissible, but large white patches are a serious fault. Eyes should be either black or brown in black dogs, and brown or amber in liver dogs. Yellow eyes are unusual. The nose should be fully pigmented, and the same color as the coat as the dog. 6. English Setter. For such an amiable, sweet, and gentlemanly dog, the English Setter is also an energetic athlete. Originally bred as a bird dog to point, his happy place is the water. With proper training and encouragement, swimming can be one of his favorite things, along with hanging out with his people, of course. The English Setter is a medium-sized dog which should have an elegant overall appearance. Its size can range from 24 inches or 61 centimeters for females and up to 27 inches or 69 centimeters for males. The field or hunting type can be finer in build and construction than those from bench or show lines. The breed was designed to hunt game such as quail, pheasant, and grouse, so should be able to cover a lot of ground when seeking the airborne scent of the birds, carrying its head high. The head should be slightly domed with a muzzle of good depth and show chiseling under the eyes, which should be dark in color with a kind, gentle expression. Sometimes the ears are referred to as leathers. The top of the ears are positioned in line with the eyes and lie in an elegant fold. It has a long muscular neck, well-angled shoulders and a brisket of good depth. The body is of a moderate length proportionate to its height, and it has strong powerful hindquarters. It carries its tail in line with its back, and the tail should be long enough to reach the hock. The main body coat is short to medium length, lies flat and has a silky texture. Long silky coat usually called feathering, forms fringes on the outside of the ears, neck, chest, down the back of the front legs, under the belly and on the back legs. The tail is also feathered with long coat. The body coat and feathering should be straight and flat but not profuse and never curly, although a slight wave can be seen. The bencher show type has a long, flowing coat that requires regular grooming. The field or hunting type has a shorter coat that requires less grooming. The base color of the coat is white with differing colored ticking also called flex or speckling. The various speckled coat colors when occurring in English setters are referred to as belton. Valid combinations are white with black flex, blue belton, white with orange flex, orange belton, white with orange flex and lighter nose, lemon belton, white with liver flex, liver belton, or tricolor, which is blue or liver belton with tan markings on the face, chest, and legs. The flecking should not form large patches on the body, and the flex should be distributed all over the body. The use of the word belton was first coined by Laverack, who developed the breed in the 19th century, to describe his ideal for flecking, and is also the name of a village in the extreme north of England. Puppies' coats may not have all the markings that they have as adults. 7. Flat-coated retriever. His beautiful coat is actually quite functional. It protects him from harsh weather and icy water. Originally bred in the United Kingdom to hunt on land and water, the flat coat is better known today as a happy, energetic, water-loving, and forever young family companion. The flat-coated retriever breed standard calls for males to be 23 to 25 inches or 58 to 64 centimeters tall at the withers, with a recommended weight of 60 to 80 pounds or 27 to 36 kilograms, and for females to be 22 to 24 inches or 56 to 61 centimeters, with a recommended weight of 55 to 75 pounds. The flat-coated retriever has strong muscular jaws and a relatively long muzzle. Its head is unique to the breed and is described as being of one piece with a minimal stop and a back skull of about the same length as the muzzle. It has almond-shaped dark brown eyes with an intelligent, friendly expression. The ears are pendant, relatively small, and lie close to the head. 
The occiput, that is the bone at the back of the skull, is not to be accentuated, as it is in setters, for example, with the head flowing smoothly into a well-arched neck. The top line is strong and straight, with a well-feathered tail of moderate length held straight off the back. This breed should be well-angulated front and rear, allowing for open, effortless movement. The flat-coated retriever is an active, multi-talented bird dog with a strong desire to please people. Exuberant, confident, and outgoing, they make a loving family pet and can be companions to small children, provided adults are nearby to direct this dog's boisterous enthusiasm. These retrievers require plenty of exercise and engagement to help channel their natural sporting energy. The British Kennel Club recommended that owners provide dogs with at least two hours of exercise a day. While they will protect their owners and property with an assertive bark, they are unlikely to back up such noise with actual aggression. Because of their excellent sense of smell, combined with their boundless energy and eagerness to please their masters, they are sometimes used as drug sniffer dogs. They are used in the breeding program for the guide dogs for the Blind Association in the UK, both as a breed and as crossbreeds with the Labrador Retriever. Eager and quick to learn, they are best trained in short intervals, as they may bore with repetition. The flat-coated retriever is a slow-maturing dog, as they do not reach full maturity until three to five years of age. Even then, these dogs retain their youthful, puppy-like outlook and demeanor well into old age. Patty Petch, author of The Complete Flat-Coated Retriever, refers to these dogs as the Peter Pan of the retriever breeds, given they never quite grow up. The flat-coated retriever is a natural breed and enjoys partaking in natural activities such as rolling in feces, playing in mud, and digging. These dogs are also thinking dogs, meaning they want to please, but look for a way to bend the rules. This characteristic helps with their hunting ability, but only if they are bonded with their owner. These dogs will work for themselves or not at all, if there is no motivation to work with the handler or dog handler bond present. 8. Irish Water Spaniel. One of the largest and oldest of the spaniel breeds, he has a naturally water-repellent coat, along with intelligence, endurance, and eager attitude. These traits combine to make the Irish Water Spaniel a versatile gun dog, especially for waterfowl. He's also a lovely companion, often called the clown of the Spaniel family. The Irish Water Spaniel is a sturdy, cobby dog native to Ireland. The coat, consisting of dense curls, sheds very little. The color is liver puce and has a very definite purple hue, unlike the color of any other known breed. The non-shedding characteristic of the coat means that people usually allergic to dogs might have less of an allergic reaction to Irish Water Spaniels. Irish Water Spaniels have several distinguishing characteristics which place them among the more recognizable of all breeds. The top knot of long, loose curls growing down from the head which often covers the eyes, a beard growing at the back of the throat often accompanied by sideburns, and a curled, liver puce colored coat. The most distinguishing characteristic of these dogs is the smooth rat tail, completely free of long coat except at the base where it is covered for 2 to 3 inches with curls. The face is entirely smooth coated and, unlike the poodle, should require little or no trimming to stay that way. An Irish water spaniel is ruggedly built with webbed feet to aid in its powerful swimming. Altogether, the Irish water spaniel presents a picture of a smart, upstanding, strongly built but not leggy dog combining great intelligence and rugged endurance with a bold, dashing eagerness of temperament. Like most dogs of the American Kennel Club sporting group, the Irish Water Spaniel is essentially an active, willing and energetic companion. Because it has been bred from stock used to fetch game and return it to hand without a fuss, it has the instinct of wanting to please. Its keen sense of working as a team makes it a relatively easy dog to train and discipline. Because of its great intelligence and quizzical nature, it has the reputation of being the clown of the spaniel family and will do ordinary things in extraordinary ways to achieve that which is asked of it. Some individual dogs can be very wary of strangers, and not every Irish water spaniel can be trusted to get along with other pets. Early socialization and training are a must. They are the largest of the spaniel group. Dogs range in height from 22 to 24 inches or 56 to 61 centimeters and weigh 55 to 65 pounds or 25 to 30 kilograms. As their name would imply these dogs love water. Irish Water Spaniels may make good family dogs, as they are usually excellent with respectful children and with other pets. They can make good guard dogs if they have been trained to do so and will protect their human families. Not usually an aggressive dog, yet the Irish Water Spaniel may have a deep, fierce-sounding bark. All Irish Water Spaniels require a grooming regimen that includes maintaining healthy ears, teeth and nails. 
The tight double coat of the Irish Water Spaniel sheds slightly, however many allergy sufferers have found them to be a comfortable pet with which to live. The texture of the hair prevents the coat from becoming tightly woven into fabric and upholstery, and any stray hairs are easily removed as they will gather to form dust bunnies. The coat can be maintained by even the novice owner if a regular effort is maintained to keep it clean and free of mats. A thorough combing to the skin should take place every one to two weeks to promote healthy skin and to remove any objects from the coat. Scissoring will be required every six to eight weeks to neaten and shape the coat, while regular exposure to water will promote the correct ringlets over the body coat. Although happy to curl up and sleep at home, regular walks and exercise are essential for a healthy, contented water spaniel. An unexercised Irish water spaniel may mean a naughty, mischievous Irish water spaniel. An ideal home though would be a working environment where the dog's minds as well as bodies are exercised. Many Irish Water Spaniel owners work their dogs in the shooting field, in obedience tests, in agility competitions, or in the confirmation show ring. 9. Labrador Retriever. One of the most popular breeds in the country, the Lab was bred to retrieve waterfowl, often under difficult conditions. He's an ideal family and sporting dog and is always, always ready for a swim. In fact, he's an excellent swimmer and will happily spend the day retrieving from the water. The Labrador Retriever Labrador or just Lab is a medium to large breed of retriever gun dog. The Labrador is the most popular breed of dog in Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States. A favorite disability assistance breed in many countries, Labradors are frequently trained to aid those with blindness or autism, act as a therapy dog, or perform screening and detection work for law enforcement and other official agencies. The breed is best known for their obedience, loyalty, and playful composure. Additionally, they are prized as sporting and hunting dogs. In the 1830s, the 10th Earl of Holm and his nephews the 5th Duke of Buckluch and Lord John Scott had imported progenitors of the breed from Newfoundland to Europe for use as gun dogs. Another early advocate of these Newfoundland dogs, or Labrador retrievers as they later became known, was the 2nd Earl of Malmesbury who bred them for their expertise in waterfowling. Labradors are medium-large, with males typically weighing 65 to 80 pounds, 29 to 36 kg, and females 55 to 70 pounds or 25 to 32 kg. The majority of the characteristics of this breed, with the exception of color, are the result of breeding to produce a working retriever. As with some other breeds, the conformation, that is typically show, English or bench in the field, that is typically working or American lines differ, although both lines are bred in both countries. In general, however, conformation Labradors tend to be bred as medium-sized dogs, shorter and stockier with fuller faces, and a slightly calmer nature than their field counterparts, which are often bred as taller, lighter-framed dogs, with slightly less broad faces and a slightly longer nose. However, field Labradors should still be proportional and fit within American Kennel Club standards. With field Labradors, excessively long noses, thin heads, long legs, and lanky frames are not considered standard. These two types are informal and not codified or standardized, no distinction is made by the AKC or other kennel clubs, but the two types come from different breeding lines. Australian stock also exists, though not seen in the West, they are common in Asia. These dogs are also very good with children. The breed tends to shed hair twice annually or regularly throughout the year in temperate climates. Some Labradors shed considerably, however, individual Labradors vary. Labrador hair is usually short and straight, and the tail is quite broad and strong. The webbed toes of the Labrador Retriever make them excellent swimmers. The webbing between their toes can also serve as a snowshoe in colder climates and keep snow from balling up between their toes, a condition that can be painful to other breeds with hair between the toes. Their interwoven coat is also relatively waterproof, providing more assistance for swimming. 10. Legato Romagnolo. This ancient breed is thought to be the original breed from which all water dogs are descended. Originally used as a gun dog to hunt waterfowl, today he's prized for his ability to hunt for truffles. In fact, he's the only purebred dog recognized as a specialized truffle searcher. However, he hasn't lost his natural water dog qualities and is an excellent swimmer. The Legato Romagnolo is a breed of dog that comes from the Romagna subregion of Italy. The name derives from Romagnolk and Lagat, meaning water dog. Its traditional function is a gun dog, specifically a water retriever, however, it is often used to hunt for truffles. The Legato Romagnolo is a curly-coated dog with an appearance of being robust and hardy. All colors are allowed except black, the coat is dense and wooly in texture. The body is square and classified as medium in size. Males. 
Height. 43 to 48 centimeters or 17 to 19 inches. Weight. 13 to 16 kilograms or 29 to 35 pounds. Females. Height. 41 to 46 centimeters or 16 to 18 inches. Weight. 11 to 14 kilograms or 24 to 32 pounds. The legato is a sporting breed. They generally have sharp senses, although their eyesight is more sensitive to motion than to detail. The breed is very loyal and loving, making them the perfect family companion. Some are easy to train, and many get along with other animals quite easily if they are socialized as puppies. Legati vary in their need for exercise, but should always be given stimulation to keep their minds occupied. In 1996 the first pair, Reno and Rosetta, in the UK, came from the Mandriol Kennels near Camacchio, where the dogs were still worked from traditional flat-bottomed punts as duck retrievers. These Legati, through subsequent exports from the UK which provided the foundation stock for Canada, USA and Australia, can be found behind many Legati worldwide. Visitors to the Legato Romagnolo Club of Great Britain breed, which stand at the world-famous Crufts Dog Show in the UK, will have seen photographs of British Legati, including Rosetta, retrieving hare, rabbit and various types of wildfowl. It is also worth noting that the photograph on the back of the first official video produced in Italy circa 1996 showed a group of Legati working not truffling, but duck shooting from a punt. In that punt were the parents and grandparents of Rosetta and Reno. The instinct to hunt, swim and retrieve is inborn and does not have to be encouraged. Legati have to be trained from an early age to look for truffles. In modern times, the legato has been bred primarily as a truffle-searching dog and not as a retriever or hunting dog. Its highly developed nose makes it a prime search dog. Some legati are excellent swimmers, while some will only paddle. Some will retrieve from lakes, streams and other bodies of water without hesitation. They are lovable family pets and tend to like attention. Legati love to dig. Many owners give them a sandbox or have a designated place to allow them to satisfy their digging urges. They also love to play seeking games and have very active and clever minds. 11. Newfoundland. You might not think of this giant sweetheart of a dog as a water dog, but the breed was developed as a water breed. They were originally bred and used as working dogs for fishermen in Newfoundland. Newfoundland dogs are known for their giant size, intelligence, tremendous strength, calm dispositions, and loyalty. They excel at water rescue and life-saving because of their muscular build, thick double coat, webbed feet, and swimming abilities. The Newfoundlands, Newfs or Newfies, have webbed feet and a water-resistant coat. Males normally weigh 65 to 80 kilograms or 143 to 176 pounds, and females 55 to 65 kilograms or 121 to 143 pounds, placing them in the giant weight range, but some Newfoundland dogs have been known to weigh over 90 kilograms or 200 pounds, and the largest on record weighed 120 kilograms or 260 pounds, and measured over 1.8 meters or 6 feet from nose to tail, ranking it among the largest of dog breeds. They may grow up to 56 to 76 centimeters or 22 to 30 inches tall at the shoulder. The American Kennel Club, AKC, standard colors of the Newfoundland dogs are black, brown, gray, and white and black, sometimes referred to as Landseer. Other colors are possible but are not considered rare or more valuable. The Kennel Club also known as KC, permits only black, brown, and white and black. The Canadian Kennel Club also known as CKC, permits only black, and white and black. The Landseer pattern is named after the artist, Sir Edwin Henry Landseer, who featured them in many of his paintings. Federation Sinologique Internationale, also known as FCI, consider the Ect Landseer, that is the European continental type, to be a separate breed. It is a taller, narrower white dog with black markings not bred with the Newfoundland. Newfoundland dogs are well known for their even temperament and stoic nature. Newfoundland dogs typically have dark brown eyes, but lighter eye colors are common for the brown or gray coated. The Newfoundland's extremely large bones give it mass, while its large musculature gives it the power it needs to take on rough ocean waves and powerful tides. These dogs have huge lung capacity for swimming extremely long distances, and a thick, oily, and waterproof double coat which protects them from the chill of icy waters. The double coat makes the dog hard to groom, and also causes a lot of shedding to occur. The droopy lips and jowls make the dog drool, especially in high heat. In the water, the dog's massive webbed paws give it maximum propulsion. The swimming stroke is not an ordinary dog paddle. Unlike other dogs, the Newfoundland moves its limbs in a down-and-out motion, giving more power to every stroke.
12. Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. The Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever is a medium-sized gun dog bred primarily for hunting. It is often referred to as a toller. It is the smallest of the retrievers and is often mistaken for a small golden retriever. Tollers are known to be intelligent, easy to please, alert, and high-energy dogs. The name toller is derived from their ability to lure waterfowl within gunshot range and then retrieve the dead or wounded birds from the water. They'd lure ducks with their playful activity along the shoreline, which would attract the ducks' attention. The breed originated in Yarmouth County, Nova Scotia, Canada. The American Kennel Club ranks the Toller as the 87th most popular dog breed. Tollers are often mistaken for small golden retrievers, but the Toller is more active, both physically and mentally. According to the breed standards, the Toller is athletic, muscular, compact, medium to heavy boned, balanced and powerful. The chest is deep. Confirmation judges require tollers to be capable of tolling, and physical faults that inhibit working ability are heavily penalized. They should be of moderate build, a lack of substance or a heavy build are penalized by judges because both detract from the breed standard and athleticism. The legs are sturdy and solid, and they have webbed feet. Tollers can be any shade of red ranging from a golden red through dark coppery red with lighter featherings on the underside of the tail, pantaloons, and body. The lighter shades of golden red are deeply pigmented and rich in color. The toller should not be buff, brown, or beige, though some buff and sable tollers do appear in breeding lines. It is common for a toller to have at least one of the following white markings. Tip of tail, feet, not extending above the pasterns, and chest. Lack of white is not a fault, tollers can be born without white markings. Dogs with white on the shoulders, around ears, back of neck, across back or flanks, or with silvery, gray or black areas in coat, are disqualified from confirmation shows. The toller was bred to retrieve from icy waters and must have a water-repellent double coat of medium length and softness and a soft, dense undercoat. The coat may have a slight wave on the back but is otherwise straight. Some winter coats may form a long loose curl at the throat. Featherings are soft and moderate in length. The tail is well feathered and held jauntily when the dog is excited or moving. The hair on the muzzle is short and fine. Seasonal shedding is to be expected. Those who breed tollers for confirmation shows consider the head which must be clean cut and slightly wedge shaped to be an important feature and believe it should resemble that of a fox and must never be blocky like that of a golden retriever. The ears are triangular and set high and well back from the skull. The pigment on a toller's nose, lips and eye rims should match and should be either black, which normally fades with age, or liver, blending into the coat. Lips fit fairly tightly around the mouth. The correct bite is a scissor bite, full dentition is required. Jaws are strong enough to carry a large bird, but tollers must have a soft mouth too. Eyes are set well apart, almond-shaped, and medium-sized and amber to dark brown in color. Expression is friendly, alert, and intelligent. Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers are known to be very intelligent, curious, alert, outgoing, and high-energy dogs. They are affectionate, eager to please, busy, and get along well with children. They are good family dogs, however during the decision process potential owners should be wary of the physical and mental commitment that is required in order to keep a toller busy. Physical stimulation should be provided for these dogs each day, since they may become destructive when they are not exercised enough or are left alone for long periods of time. Duck tollers are working animals and are happiest when they have a job to do. Tollers are excellent hunting companions. They excel at many types of sporting competitions such as agility, dock diving, and obedience. Their keen sense of smell, intelligence, drive for work, and small size make them perfect search and rescue dogs. The breed standard states that the dog should have a strong retrieving drive, intense birdiness, endurance, and a love for water. Tollers do not have an aggressive bark. Some have a unique sounding bark known as the toller scream, a high-pitched howl-like sound which is often referred to as their singing. They do not use this in violent situations, rather, the toller scream is expressed when they are excited. 13. Otterhound. Rarer than the giant panda, the otterhound was bred for hunting otter. He's a big, boisterous dog, humorous, friendly, and affectionate. Fans of the breed call him the clown of the hound group. His rough double coat and webbed feet are ideal for the water, and he's an exceptionally strong swimmer. The Otterhound is a British dog breed. It is a scent hound and is currently recognized by the Kennel Club as a vulnerable native breed, with around 600 animals worldwide. The first recorded Otterhounds known to resemble the current breed are in the northwest of England in the first half of the 19th century. 
for example, the Hawkstone Otter Hunt and Squire Lomax's Otter Hounds. In the second half of the 19th century, French griffins were outcrossed, including one eight wolf cross griffin Vendine from the Comte de Cantalou in Normandy. In the early 20th century the griffin Nivernais was crossed into the breed, and one particular dog, Boatman, a grand griffin Vendine and bloodhound cross, became an ancestor for several kennels. The Otterhound is a large rough-coated hound with an imposing head. Originally bred for hunting, it has great strength and a strong body with long striding steps. This makes it able to perform prolonged hard work. The Otterhound hunts its quarry both on land and in water, and it has a combination of characteristics unique among hounds, most notably an oily, rough double coat and substantial webbed feet. They have a nose that can track in the mud and water for over 72 hours. Otterhounds generally weigh between 80 and 115 pounds or 36 and 52 kilograms. They have extremely sensitive noses which make them inquisitive and perseverant in investigating scents. Consequently, they need particular supervision when outdoors. They are friendly dogs with a unique bass voice which they use frequently. Otter hunting dates back to the early medieval period, with references it is found as early as 1360. The Otterhound, however, can only be traced back as a distinct breed as far as the early 1800s. The Otter is one of the largest and most intelligent carnivorous mammals in Europe. To be equal to the Otter, an Otterhound was said to need a bulldog's courage, a Newfoundland's strength in water, a pointer's nose, a retriever's sagacity, the stamina of a foxhound, the patience of a beagle, and the intelligence of a collie. In 1978, due to the dramatic decline in Otter numbers, the Otter was placed on the list of protected species in Britain, and Otter hunting therefore ceased. It was never banned in Britain, the Otter hunts stopped hunting voluntarily, as it was they who realized that Otter numbers were dropping dramatically, and brought it to the attention of the authorities. By 1977, nine registered packs of Otterhounds were still in existence. A few hunts switched to hunting mink or koipu, but many of the original Otterhound packs ceased to exist altogether. Hounds were often passed to newly founded minkhound packs. The Pembroke and Carmarthenshire minkhounds are the only pack today with a pure Otterhound pack. As the dogs had been selectively bred for their hunting capabilities, only a few of the bloodlines were suitable for breeding into companion animals. 14. Portuguese Water Dog. This intelligent and athletic dog is truly the fisherman's friend. In his native country, this web-footed breed was used to herd fish into the nets, as well as to swim out and retrieve broken nets and lost equipment. He needs a great deal of exercise and attention, and will be even happier if all this takes place in the water. The Portuguese water dog is classified as a working dog by the American Kennel Club. Portuguese water dogs are originally from the Portuguese region of the Algarve, from where the breed expanded to all around Portugal's coast, where they were taught to herd fish into fishermen's nets, retrieve lost tackle or broken nets, and act as couriers from ship to ship or ship to shore. Portuguese water dogs rode in fishing trawlers as they worked their way from the Atlantic waters of Portugal to the waters off the coast of Iceland fishing for cod. In Portuguese, the breed is called cow de agua literally dog of water. In Portugal, the dog is also known as the Algarvian water dog, cow de agua algarvio, or Portuguese fishing dog, cow pescador portugues. Cow de agua de pilo ondulado is the name given to the wavy-haired variety, and cow de agua de pilo encaracolado is the name for the curly-coated variety. The Portuguese water dog is a fairly rare breed, only 36 Portuguese water dogs were entered for Britain's Crufts competition in 2013. Though some breeders claim they are a hypoallergenic dog breed, there is no scientific evidence to support the claim that hypoallergenic dog breeds exist. Their non-shedding qualities have made them more popular in recent years. The Portuguese water dog has recently gained more fame by being the chosen breed of US President Barack Obama, who has two of them, Bo and Sonny. The Obama family chose Sonny for the breed's comparatively hypoallergenic nature, while Bo was given to them by Senator Ted Kennedy. The closest relatives of the PWD are widely thought to be the standard poodle. Like poodles and several other water dog breeds, PWDs are intelligent, can have curly coats, have webbed toes for swimming, and do not shed. However, Portuguese water dogs are more robustly built, with stout legs, and can have a wavy coat instead of tightly curled. If comparing the structure to that of a poodle, there are significant differences between the two breeds. The Portuguese water dog is built of strong substantial bone, well-developed, neither refined nor coarse, and a solidly built muscular body. The Portuguese water dog is off-square, slightly longer than tall when measured from prosternum to rearmost point of the buttocks, and from withers to ground. 
Portuguese water dog eyes are black or various tones of brown, and their coats can be black, brown, black and white or brown and white. Male Portuguese water dogs usually grow to be about 20 to 23 inches or 51 to 58 centimeters tall, and they weigh between 40 and 60 pounds or 18 and 27 kilograms, while the females usually grow to be about 17 to 21 inches or 43 to 53 centimeters tall, and they weigh between 35 and 50 pounds or 16 and 23 kilograms. 15. Spanish Water Dog it's unusual that a top-notch herding dog is also considered an excellent water dog, but this breed is both. In fact, he's happiest with a job to do. Although his origins are unclear, we do know that this is an ancient breed used for herding and to hunt on both water and land. Athletic and sturdy, he's an expert swimmer. The Spanish water dog Perro de Agua Espanol breed is used in Spain as a general-purpose sheepdog and guard. It is also used sometimes as a gun dog and is skilled at retrieval from water. The Spanish water dog Akea SWD has strong genetic links to other water breeds, such as the Portuguese water dog, the French barbet and the Irish water spaniel. The SWD is a medium-sized, athletic, robust dog that is slightly longer than tall. Their tails are usually docked in the US, but undocked tails are not a fault in confirmation showing if the dog was bred in a non-docking country. The head should be strong and carried with elegance. The skull is flat, and the top is parallel with the top of the muzzle. The nose, eye rims and paw pads are the same color as the darkest part of the coat are darker. The eyes are expressive and set fairly white apart. They should be hazel, chestnut or dark brown in color, depending on the coat color. The ears are set at medium height on the skull and are triangular. It has a distinctive curly coat which is woolly in texture and may form cords when long. The coat should not be clipped or groomed for aesthetic purposes. Instead, it should look entirely natural, as though it is not groomed at all. It should never be trimmed but sheared down at least once a year. SWD puppies are always born with curly hair. The SWD can be seen in a variety of colors. It may be solid black, beige, brown, or white, by colored where the second color is white, or particolored. Tricolored dogs are strictly prohibited by the currently held, worldwide, standards for the breed, as are black and tan or brown and tan color combinations. The Spanish water dog is a medium-sized dog. The approximate measurements are Males Height, at the withers 44 to 50 centimeters or 17 to 20 inches Weight 18 to 22 kilograms or 40 to 49 pounds Females Height, at the withers 40 to 45 centimeters or 16 to 18 inches Weight 14 to 18 kilograms or 31 to 40 pounds The SWD is diligent, loyal, affectionate, and intelligent. They have very strong natural herding and guarding instincts, leading them to become the self-appointed guardians of their homes. SWDs thrive on work and play. Their athleticism and extremely hard-working nature leads them to excel at any number of tasks. They can be wary with strangers, and early and continuing socialization with a variety of people and other animals is essential for a well-adjusted, social dog. Good socialization at an early age greatly helps them cohabit with small children. 16. Standard Poodle. Despite his elegant looks, the Standard Poodle is more than just a runway model. With his athleticism and intelligence, he excels in obedience and other dog activities. In France, he was used as a waterfowl retriever and still enjoys a good swim today. The Poodle is a formal dog breed that comes in three varieties, Standard Poodle, Miniature Poodle, and Toy Poodle. The origin of the breed is still discussed, with a prominent dispute over whether the poodle descends from Germany as a type of water dog or from the French barbet. Ranked second most intelligent dog breed just behind the border collie, the poodle is skillful in many dog sports and activities, including agility, obedience, tracking, herding, circus performance, and assistance dogs. Poodles have taken top honors in many confirmation shows, including Best in Show at the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show in 1991, 2002, and 2020, and at the World Dog Show in 2007 and 2010. Toy Poodles won Best in Show at Crufts in 1966 and 1982. Standard Poodles achieved the award in 1955, 1985, 2002, and 2014. The 2002 winner came from Norway and was the first overseas exhibit to win the Crufts Best in Show Award. The poodle has been bred in at least three sizes, including standard, miniature, and toy. According to the American Kennel Club, which recognized the breed in 1887, the standard poodle is the oldest of the three varieties and was later bred down to the miniature and toy sizes. 
The British Kennel Club also recognizes three sizes, stating that the miniature and toy are scaled-down versions of the standard. The Federation Sinologique Internationale FCI, recognizes four sizes of one breed. Standard, medium, miniature, and toy. Poodles exist in many coat colors. Despite the standard poodle's claim to greater age than the other varieties, some evidence shows the smaller types developed only a short time after the breed assumed the general type by which it is recognized today. The smallest, or toy variety, was developed in England in the 18th century. Hunting and working dogs were typically of the standard variety, though some reports suggest that smaller varieties such as the miniature may have been popular for truffle hunting, as their feet were less likely to damage the delicate fungi. Miniature and toy varieties tend to be bred primarily for companionship. In the mid to late 19th century, the trade in dyeing and affixing their fur to unusual proportions began with the need to complement the Victorian and Georgian sensibilities of these women, to the point that their status as a dog of the middle and upper classes was quite solid by the time of the founding of the Kennel Club in the 1870s, as they were one of the first dog breeds registered. 17. Wetterhen. Also known as the Frisian Water Dog, the Wetterhen is a breed of dog traditionally used as a hunting dog for hunting small mammals and waterfowl in the province of Friesland in the Netherlands. The name of the dog comes from the West Frisian Wetterhen, meaning water dog. Plural of Wetterhen is Wetterhounden in Dutch. The breed may also be called the Otterhen, not to be confused with the Otterhound or Dutch Spaniel, although it is not a Spaniel-type dog. The Wetterhen is a medium-sized dog between 55 and 59 centimeters or 21.6 to 23 inches at the withers. They weigh between 25 and 35 kilograms or 55 and 77 pounds. Their coat is thick and curly except for the head, ears and legs, where the coat is smoother, the water-repellent coat is described as having a greasy feel. Coat color may be solid black or brown, or black with white, or brown with white, with or without white ticking or roan marks. The texture of the coat should not be woolly, as such fur will not resist water. The ears are low set and hang flat to the head, and the tail curls tightly over the back. The breed has an unusual, somewhat grim expression due to the shape of the eyes, which marks it as different from other dog breeds. The ancestral type of the Wetterhen was developed at least 400 years ago in the Dutch province of Friesland. The origins of the Wetterhen are conjectured to be from gypsy dogs, crossed with an indigenous Frisian dog, perhaps the old water dog, a type which is now extinct. Dogs of this type were kept for the difficult and dangerous hunting of Fitch, Mistella putorius, and Otter, Lutra Lutra, in the water. The dogs were also used for retrieving waterfowl and as watchdogs. Although the dogs almost disappeared during World War II, fanciers were able to bring the breed back through careful breeding, and it is gaining in popularity. Databases are maintained by the Netherlands Vereniging voor Stabage en Wetterhounen, Club for the Stabage and Wetterhen, and the Wetterhen Vereniging Nederland for understanding pedigrees and computing inbreeding coefficients. Internationally the breed is recognized by the Federation Sinologique Internationale in the Water Dogs section of Group 8. The United Kennel Club recognizes the breed in its Gundog group. The breed is also recognized by a number of minor registries, hunting clubs, and internet-based dog registry businesses, and promoted as a rare breed for those seeking an unusual pet. This breed is an excellent gun dog, effective as both a land and water retriever, however its strong will and natural guarding abilities make early training a requirement. The breed standard describes the breed's temperament as reserved and an ideal guard dog, though never aggressive, which makes it an excellent family dog. Although described as strong-willed the Wetterhen is never stubborn or willfully disobedient. Perseverance is a much better term, because they finish what they start, whatever it takes. Imperturbable, they finish what they think to be their task, thereby the breed is sensitive and should never be treated or trained harshly. Brought up and used to children, they are tolerant to children to the point where the dog should be protected from children instead of the other way around. Eighteen, Cantabrian Water Dog. The Cantabrian Water Dog is a land race breed of dog developed in the coast of Cantabria, northern Spain, as an assistant to fishermen. The breed was classified and recognized by the Breeds Committee of the Spanish Ministry of Environment on 22 March 2011. The Cantabrian Water Dog is an ancestral population in the north of the Iberian Peninsula, whose origins seem to be common to Barbet. The breed is socially, culturally and historically rooted in the towns and villages of the whole coast of Cantabria and eastern Asturias. The work of this breed has been traditionally related to fishing work. 
collecting fishes that fell into the water, watching the ships when they were moored in port, taking the rope between ships and to the dock, or acting like a lifeguard. The population of Cantabrian water dog shows a clear morphological and genetic differentiation that allows discrimination from other dog populations in the same group with close geographic distribution. Genetic studies place it as close to the Spanish water dog as to the Barbiter canich. These animals are lighter and shorter than those of the Spanish breed, where they were previously included. Thus, 75% of males and 38% of females would be excluded from the breed standard for height of the withers, while using the criterion of weight, 91% of males and 80% females would be excluded. 19. St. John's Water Dog. The St. John's Water Dog, also known as the St. John's Dog or the Lesser Newfoundland, is an extinct land race of domestic dog from Newfoundland. Little is known of the types that went into its genetic makeup, although it was probably a random bred mix of Old English, Irish and Portuguese working dogs. They were favorite dogs of fishermen because they have extraordinary qualities like good temperament and working behavior. The number of St. John's water dogs started declining by the beginning of the 20th century. By the early 1980s, the land race was extinct. The St. John's Water Dog was the ancestor of the modern retrievers, including the flat-coated retriever, curly-coated retriever, the Chesapeake Bear Retriever, the Golden Retriever, and the Labrador Retriever. They were called water dogs because of their love for water and their coat, which was water-resistant. The St. John's Water Dog was also an ancestor to the large and gentle Newfoundland, probably through breeding with Rafero do Alentejos brought to the island by the generations of Portuguese fishermen who had been fishing offshore since the 15th century. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, St. John's water dogs were exported from Newfoundland to England. These dogs were crossbred with other dogs to create the retrievers. St. John's water dogs were medium-sized, strong, and stocky. More closely resembling modern English Labradors than American Labs. They had characteristic white patches on the chest, chin, feet, and muzzle. This coloration occasionally manifests in modern labs as a small white chest patch known as a medallion, or as a few stray white hairs on the feet. The classic tuxedo markings of the St. John's water dog commonly manifest in Labrador retriever mixes. Writings as early as the 17th century mention hardy medium-sized black dogs that accompanied Newfoundland fishermen in their boats and retrieved distant lines or nets of fish, hauling them back to the boat. The dogs were described as having a short thick coat, rudder-like tail, high endurance, and a great love of swimming. The St. John's water dog was made extinct in its homeland by a combination of two factors. In an attempt to encourage sheep raising, heavy restrictions and taxes were placed on dog ownership during the 19th century. Also, their main overseas destination, the UK, imposed a rigorous long-term quarantine on all imported animals, especially dogs in 1885, as part of the eradication of rabies. However, in both Newfoundland and the Maritime provinces, there are still large black mixed breed dogs with many characteristics of the original St. John's Water Dog. The last two known St. John's Water Dogs were photographed in the early 1980s in old age, having survived in a very remote area, but both were male, bringing the St. John's Water Dog to an end. In the 1970s, Canadian author Farley Mowat had tried to save them by crossing his St. John's Water Dog, named Albert, with a Labrador Retriever. Four puppies resulted, and all had the distinctive white markings of their sire. Two puppies died, the other two were given away. One was given to Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and the other to Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin. In 1970, Moet and Albert appeared in an episode of the CBC series Telescope. The episode includes Moet telling a bedtime story to his dog. 20. Bassett Fauve de Bretagne. The Basset Fauve de Bretagne is a smallish hound, built along the same lines as the Basset Hound, but lighter all through and longer in the leg. Wire-coated, the coat is very harsh to the touch, dense, red wheaten or fawn. He measures 32 to 38 centimeters in height and weighs between 36 to 40 pounds, but due to the old and no longer permitted practice of registering mixed litters of griffin and basset furrows, sometimes a litter of bassets will produce a long-legged dog, more akin to the griffin. They have coarse dense fur which may require stripping. Although their coat repels dirt and does not mat easily, they still require weekly combing and brushing. The hair on the ears is shorter, finer and darker than that on the coat. The ears just reach the end of the nose, rather than trailing on the ground, and should be pleated. They should have dark eyes and nose and ideally no crook on the front legs. The French standard says these are the shortest backed of all the Basset breeds, so they generally do not appear as exaggerated as the British Basset. 
The Basset Fauve de Bretagne is a neat-looking hound, free from exaggeration and lively and friendly. As a scent hound, though, he has the usual failing of becoming absorbed with what he is scenting. He is agile enough to trouble any rabbity sense. Where the Basset Fauve de Bretagne is still used for hunting, it is either singly or in pairs. The Basset Fauve de Bretagne became established as a distinct breed early in the 19th century and were introduced to the UK in 1983, and their cheerful disposition has earned them a good many friends. Overall a very sound dog, they do not appear to suffer from any hereditary defects. However, like all hounds they are of an independent turn of mind, and early training in puppyhood will reap dividends later. It is never realistic to expect a hound to be obedient, as they have their own agenda much of the time, but they should become cooperative. The coat is easy to care for. A regular brush will keep it smart, but like a terrier he will need stripping two or three times a year. This is not a difficult task, though you may prefer to leave it to a grooming parlor. A cheerful and equable breed, the Basset Fauve de Bretagne is of a size to make a handy house dog, though he has a great taste for exercise and thoroughly enjoys getting out into the fields. Most Basset Fauve de Bretagnes can be understood because their eyes are very clear and their ears turn out when they are nervous or unsure. 21. Tweed Water Spaniel. The village of Norham, Northumberland, just south of the River Tweed, was noted as being long famous for a breed of water spaniel, of which were invariably brown. The Tweed Water Spaniel had a long tail and a curly, liver-colored coat, and looked similar to the Irish Water Spaniel, except it had a heavier muzzle and a pointed skull. The dog also had thick, slightly feathered, hound-like ears, droopy lips, and four legs that were feathered, but hind legs that were not. Their size was that of a small retriever, with a liver-colored curly coat. Instances of offspring which were liver-colored but tan below the knees, were noted in Hugh Dalziel's 1897 work British Dogs. Their varieties, history, characteristics, breeding, management, and exhibition, although the author speculated this may have been due to bloodhound ancestry in one of the parents of the litters. The breed was known for its intelligence, courage, and sporting ability. The main pairing from which the modern golden retrievers are said to have descended were from a dog named Naus that was a rare yellow wavy-coated retriever and a female tweed spaniel named Belle. During the formation of the modern breed known as the curly-coated retriever, several breeds were used to bring their characteristics into this new breed. These included poodles, wetterhens, barbets, Irish water spaniels, and breeds that are now extinct, including the large rough water dog and the tweed water spaniel. The curly-coated retriever has been considered purebred since the early 20th century. 22. German Short-Haired Pointer. The German Short-Haired Pointer is a medium to large-sized breed of dog developed in the 19th century in Germany for hunting. A versatile hunting breed, being an all-purpose gun breed of dog suitable for both land and water, it is streamlined yet powerful with strong legs that make it able to move rapidly and turn quickly. It has moderately long floppy ears set high on the head. Its muzzle is long, broad, and strong, allowing it to retrieve even heavy game. The dog's profile should be straight or strongly Roman-nosed, any dished appearance to the profile is incorrect. Its eyes are generally brown, with darker eyes being desirable, yellow or bird of prey eyes are a fault. The tail is commonly docked, although this is now prohibited in some countries. In the current breed standard, the tail is docked at approximately 40% of its length before it curves. In competition it is penalized if the tail is curved either up or down while the dog is moving. When the GSP is in classic point stance, the tail should be held straight out from the body, forming a line with the pointing head and body. Like all German pointers, GSPs have webbed feet. They are known for going after waterfowl in the water. Thank you for watching this video. At Dog Orb we are all about dogs. If you love dogs, or you are curious about dog breeds, history, care, accessories and general information, like our page on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and read our blog posts on our website. www.dogorb.com For your dog accessories, check out our website at www.dogorb.com. We provide hundreds of dog supplies and accessories at the most affordable bargains.